Good morning, everyone. How are we this morning? Um, welcome to Tiny Kitchen Big Flavor. Today I'm gonna be canning some salmon. Um, and I have two slabs of salmon here, which I have already uh, rinsed and pat dry. I'm gonna be removing the skin only because the scale hasn't been removed and I don't want that in my in my uh, thing. But what I do with it is I will crackle the skin and then have it for my neighbor's dog because this is really good for them. It's got a lot of omega oils. But a couple of things that we want to get out of the way first before we begin. Um, as you can see, Conchita's out and ready to play. Now, once in a while, I will take my lid and I've already examined my lid. I normally, when I finish canning, I examine my, my unit. So the next time I don't have to do it. So, okay. So once in a blue moon, I go ahead and I put a little bit of oil on the rubber here, just a tiny bit so it doesn't get stuck on the canner. Some, sometimes it'll be hard, but you're just going to do very little. You're not going to go crazy. So I might do this. Oh boy. If this thing works, which is not working. Okay, there we go. So you see that little bit there? That little bit I'm just going to rub all over. I'm not doing it all over my rubber seal. Just, I'm sorry, just like this. I'm sorry for the angle of the camera, but that's the only way that I can put it because my kitchen is very, very, very small and I don't have a lot of room, so. Okay, so that's done, okay? Then I wanna show you a couple of other things. That's done. Um, hold on, let me just kind of raise my hands a little bit. Okay, so the other things that I wanted to show you is the things that we're gonna be using today. I have here in this pot, all my lids with a hot water and about a tablespoon of white distilled vinegar just hanging out there. My jars have been washed and disinfected. The reason I'm not worried about them being room temperature is because everything is gonna be room temperature when I put it in the canner. Cause you don't add, I don't add any liquids or anything like that. But when you're washing your vessels it's important that at that time you also check that you have no chips or anything like that going on and i don't know if you can see this but right there that's chipped it broke off so that means i can't use this jar okay the other thing that's important i want you to see the difference between the lids okay so if you have a lid let me see can you see that done you see that dent there? That dented like, oh Lord, it's gonna be hard because of the glare of the sun. That's the dented there. Where is it? Where did it go? Oh, here, see that? Versus this one. If you see them up close, this one is not good. There's a dent there. So you want that everything is perfect, no dents. Okay, so that's done. Another thing that I wanted to show you, so we will be using this gadget, which is awesome. And it's gonna be to pick up our jars from the canner. This is gonna be to stir and ensure that everything is well packed in your jars. These are some of the seasonings that I will be experimenting with. Normally when I make, um, uh, when I can salmon, I only do bay leaves, a little salt, and um, uh, what else, and some garlic. But this time I'm gonna experiment with different, different things, just to see how I like it. Like for instance, this is a salad dressing that I have made, and what it has in it is garlic, ginger, uh, vinegar it's got um rice vinegar a little bit of olive oil a little bit of honey and i believe that's it and i just shake it so i'm gonna try this on one of my 
one of the jars or maybe two just to see what it'll turn out like um here i have just oregano salt garlic and balsamic vinegar i'm going to try a little bit of this on one of the jars okay this one i have la plata peak uh, which is from savory spice seasoning and it has onions garlic salt cumin Mexican oregano, crushed red pepper, black pepper, and chili pepper. That's a lot of pepper. And I don't do hot pepper, so I might do just a smidgen up just to see. Because I don't want to mess it up. The reason, oh, oh, and I also do bay leaves on different ones. But the reason, and this here, I'm sorry, I almost forgot. I have here distilled vinegar and some clean napkins. And it's going to be after you pack your salmon in there and you take the air make sure that there's no air then you're going to go with this dip it in your vinegar and you're going to wipe your rims to ensure that there's no bacteria nothing on it that can potentially mess up your canning or your your goods from going bad i mean after all after you went through all that trouble another thing that's important to mention is that I am at 10, I'm going to be doing 10 pounds of pressure, um, anywhere from 10 to 13 in that range, um, because I'm not at really high altitude, but you can check that, the um, right altitude for your location if you go to the website and look up your state for canning, what are the requirements. I am going to go ahead and remove the skin on this. And then I'm going to bring you back. Like I said, Conchita's ready, but I have not added any water or anything like that. The other important thing that I wanted to mention, this pot will hold 14 pint of food. Because you have to do, you know, if you do a double decker and you double it. But if you're going to double, you need something in the middle, like a tray to put on top of one and then at your other one. But in the meantime, let me just go ahead and take the skin off and I'll bring you back in a minute. I okay guys, I hope that this is a better view because it's really hard to put this thing when you can see it. I'm gonna have to get a, another tripod. This one is just way too small. But in any case, we are done cutting and I'm gonna start putting you know, putting it together. Uh, my, the salmon is at room temperature, so I don't need to worry about that. All I'm gonna do is start adding a little bit of the uh, seasoning, however, whatever I want in it. What so I will do is, I will start putting my fish. Make sure that you pack it in nicely so you have enough room. I don't suspect that I'm gonna fill or 14 jars so i don't think i have enough you just want to make sure that it's nice and um let me put a little bit of this one in use the this one. Oh, this just looks very very far i'm gonna have to move this because it's not gonna work so you see how much i'm putting in here so all I'm, this is all i'm doing and that's it I have to say that I prefer not putting a lot of stuff in it because when it's done, if I want to, you know, just put it, I don't want a flavor and I want to add my own, let's say I want to drizzle lemon and pepper and whatever, then I can do it afterwards. But you get the picture. Look at that. That's one. I, like I said, I don't think I'm going to have enough for all of it, but... Here we go. I'm going to add a little bit. This is butter and oregano and I forget what else. Oh, and salt in there. Load my fish. Uh oh, yeah, I don't have enough fish, you guys. I can tell you right now that I needed to buy at least two more slaps to make this thing work because you really want it nice and packed, okay? Not overly, but you get the picture. So I'm gonna use this to try and work it down some. Okay, maybe. Because I want an inch head space. And that looks about an inch to me, head space. Okay, 
moving on to the all right guys so i only had enough for five jars okay and i'm not really happy about that but um the thing about it is remember i said five i mean an inch of headspace but the thing about it is because we're not adding any liquid or anything like that the salmon is going to render its own juices and it's going to work itself down so it's not going to stay all the way full so what i'm going to do now is i have already made sure there's no air bubble in there and i just went around with this or whatever you can you know just pushing it down making sure that you don't have any air bubble the next thing i'm going to do now is remember my lids are clean and they're right here so i'm going to take dip my paper towel and vinegar distilled vinegar and i'm going to clean the rims in case some of my seasoning or the fish or anything kind of got on the rim i'm just going to do this to clean it really good like this see that because we want to make sure we don't have any residue of anything so that your your jars will seal nicely if you have stuff on it trust me it won't seal and you're gonna not you're not gonna be happy so okay so now we have this one is left so two of those big salmon uh skirts or steak or whatever you want to call it those big ones that i showed you gave me enough for five quarts jar want to make sure that there is nothing here that's going to prevent this jar from sealing let me get another one and wipe again okay because this one had a little bit of the butter and i sure don't want that to compromise the seal on my jar so okay okay so there we go now the next step is to get my lids and here we go although i have another one of these my lids are disinfected um one thing to make sure because it's happened to me before when the lids you put them like this sometimes two of them fall inside each other so make sure you don't have two you only have one and then just do this and you're gonna finger tighten it you're not gonna tie in like you're like the incredible hulk okay you're just gonna finger tight the beauty of this is that you can use the 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 part of the lid that just tightens as many times over as long as they're not damaged um but the ones that have the rubber you can only really use it once they say i have used it twice but again it depends the condition of it because if it's if the condition of it has been compromised you're better off just getting new ones instead of trying to um I need something to pick that up let me take off because these gloves have been compromised so i'm just gonna put a new pair clean pair of gloves because you guys i go through these things like mac crazy through the gloves i mean mac crazy because i don't do anything without them so now that my hands, these gloves are clean, I am going to be just tightening these jars and loading them. Now the water that I'm gonna put in my canner is gonna be the same temperature as this, which is room temperature, because I'm not trying, uh, you know, nothing is going in there hot or cold. Everything is room temperature. And that's why I like to do salmon, because I find it the easiest of things to can. There's not a whole lot of fuss, okay? So I love it because of that. <clears throat> Oops, I haven't, okay. So now let me do this other one. Let's make sure, see what I mean when I told you that you gotta make sure there's two in there. See how they stuck together? So please make sure that that doesn't happen to you because you're not gonna like it. In the meantime, I gotta think what else I can can because I'm not going through all this for five little jars. That's not happening. Because that's just how it's so, yeah. Okay, and Conchita doesn't like it either because she's like, you, you bring me out to play and then you just cut me at the knees. 
Okay, so now that all that's done, I did not use this because I'm afraid it has so much hot pepper in there, I'm terrified. So I'm not using it. I'll probably use that and put it when I make my hot salsa and not, not do that. Okay, so what's gonna happen is I'm just gonna put them in here with regular water. And what you're supposed to do is do three of these with water, just regular water, which is what I'm doing here, and put it on con conchita. However, because I'm gonna be canning for an hour and a half, I always add a little bit more water than it calls for, because I don't wanna run the risk that my pot runs out of water, it gets too low, and then the pressure in my jars might pop. So I always add a little bit extra when I'm doing canning that's gonna take an hour and 30 minutes, okay? If it was for an hour and 15, then yeah, okay, I might. Oh Lord, what am I gonna can that will take the same amount of time? I don't know, I mean, five jars, that's not enough. So I may run to the store and get some more salmon just to fill it because I'm not digging this at all. Anyway, we'll bring you back in a minute. Okay guys, so I am back. I had to go to the store and get myself some codfish. Like I said, because I wanted to kind of load my canner as best I could. I'm going to add a little bit more water, but I'm going to put this on top. And then I'm going to proceed to add my other jars like so. And this is cod that I season with sofrito and other spices. So when I want to make um cod with potatoes the way we make it back home it'll be ready to go oops i almost forgot one so this is what i mean you see so your canner is it's loaded that just i wrote on it but that's a good lid so don't worry about it i'm gonna add a little bit more water and then i'm gonna make sure that these are all finger tight so i don't have one popping and then I'm gonna start the process. Okay, so my canner is my canner is loaded. Or should I say Conchita, because that's her name. I'm just gonna turn it on so I can get my water going to a nice uh, boil, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, guys, I don't know if you can hear it, but the water is boiling. Can you, can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. So. <clears throat> The reason I did this is because I didn't have the water preheated or the jars preheated or anything. Everything went in the can or room temperature. And then I just turned on the oven, I mean the stove. And when it comes up to this point and you hear it boiling, that's when I'm going to put my lid on. And it's important that you follow because you see here, that B needs to match this B, okay? And you see there that it says open and close. So I'm gonna put okay, it on. So my lid is on, and if you notice, I have this gauge facing out so that I can see it easily. The other thing is I'm gonna wait until I have a steady steam coming out of this valve. And once I have a steady steam coming out of here, then I'm gonna put my timer for 10 minutes. And once the 10 minutes are up, then I will put my weight gauge on top and that's and then I'll wait for this to reach 10, 10 pounds of pressure and then I'll start my clock to one and a half hours. Okay guys, so you see the steady steam here? Can you see it? It's steady. At this point, I have, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put my timer to 10. Whoops. Cancel to 10 minutes. After those 10 minutes are up, then I will put my weight gauge on here. And then I will wait for this gauge to reach over the 10 pounds of pressure. And then I can start putting my clock to an hour and a half. When you're back. Okay, guys, so you see the steady steam here? Can you see it? It's steady. At this point, I have 
uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put my timer to 10. Whoops, cancel to 10 minutes. After those 10 minutes are up, then I will put my weight gauge on here and then I will wait for this gauge to reach over the 10 pounds of pressure and then I can start putting my clock to an hour and a half. When you back, and so you see, it's almost at the 10 pounds of pressure. At this point, I'm gonna move my gauge here because for my oven, when I put it there, it will stay between the 10 and 13. It won't go over 13, I should say, and it will not go under 10. And that's how I need to keep it. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer, and that is all I'm gonna do. Once it reaches the hour and a half, I'll just turn it off and let it cool on its own. I will not open it. Okay guys, so we are back. As you can see, I'm still in between. I have about three minutes to go. At this point, I'm just gonna turn it off because it's still not gonna go down in three minutes. It's not gonna go under the 10 pounds of pressure. And then I'll just leave it there to cool off on its own. But it's pretty much done. So I'm gonna turn this off. I don't really need it anymore because I only got three minutes to go. Oops. Actually, look at this. See? Nothing. So that's a good sign too. But the main things you're looking for is that there's no pressure and this valve is down. Normally it would be up. Okay. Everything seems to have done very well. All I'm going to wait for now, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to wait for the popping sound. Because when they seal, you'll hear a boop, boop sound. You heard that? Yeah. That's what happens when they seal. Let me see this one. No, it doesn't look like it's sealed yet. But you will hear a popping sound. And that's just an indication that <laughs> you heard it again. That's music to my ears. Okay, so let's start pouring it, pulling them out. And the other thing that you're going to notice is that the lids are going to be the top one that you screw on. They're going to be a little bit loose. And that happens all the time. So no worries. Oh, my. The reason I put these two here, because I don't want this, the countertop to be cold and the jar to come in contact with it. Because that will cause your jar to bust. Oh, just look at that. It might not look... <laughs> Did you hear that? Ugh. All right, you see the water is clear in there? Nothing busted. I am very, very pleased. Okay, guys, so here you have it. This is a thing of beauty. You see how this one is extended up? That's because it hasn't sealed. Don't you see the difference in this one? That one's sealed. It will be loose. Look at this. See, loose. That's why you do finger tight, but Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to give it a thumbs up. On another note, check out my friend Lori at Lori's Kitchen. She started her YouTube channel and she's got a lot of good information. She, will, she puts out a video once a week for now, but they're all very, very good information. So give her a shout out. Let's support each other. Anyway, Thank you for watching, guys. Have a blessed day.